loyal listeners. Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I'm your host here, Luke Larson, and joining me today, as per the usual, my lovely and loquacious special guest who will be assisting me in leisurely launching you into levity, Old Legs. Mm, how we doing, buddy? How we doing? I'm fantastic because we are joining forces here with, once again, with friend of the show, the the man who united the two of us together, yeah, um, and and the one who can tear us apart in the end. I think. Yeah, the heir to the popcorn throne himself, friend of the show, Tyler Burdett Dog Backus. I'm back again, everybody. How's it going? Not too bad, Tyler. He's uh, he's come out of he's come out of the ocean. Uh, he's out there. He's out there hurting people, and we don't know why. We don't know why. We don't know why. We gotta stop him. There's <laughs> there's uh somebody's uh somebody's working on some secret top secret takes, and <laughs> and and Tyler. Uh, he won't hears stand them for it halfway across the planet and he's they tried to keep me away from this podcast but i heard <laughs> that it was happening so i zoned in and found their hideout and i'm ready to debate this yeah yeah we got a little uh we got a little godzilla versus kong today uh for the loyal listeners uh one i think we're pretty excited about coming off the old uh the snyder cut yeah um some of our best work honestly you know i don't yeah, sh- it on the back enough but um, shout out to all the loyal listeners who stuck that one out the full four <laughs> hours those were the true <laughs> fans <laughs> maybe loyal listener i don't know did we get plural listen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just me editing it i was the one like i you know, i you know i give anyone credit who watched the snyder cut uh, <laughs> full but, stop yeah, yeah. So uh, go go ahead. Let's not spend any more time there. Yeah. Uh, what are we What are we doing today, Luke? So, as Tyler mentioned, we had we had the big release here: Godzilla vs Kong, uh, part of the Warner Brothers slate here for 2021. And I would say that you know we're all kind of I don't know if aficionados is the right word, but we've definitely tuned in to to this monster franchise which is a big feat for tyler not to throw you on the coals here but there aren't a lot of movie franchises that that tyler follows along with so no no this isn't too many but you know i'll hop in on godzilla i'll be right there so (laughs) so we had to we had to bring him on so for everybody's favorite part of the podcast the plot synopsis here we go the epic next chapter in the cinematic monsterverse pits two of the greatest icons in motion picture history against one another, the fearsome Godzilla and the mighty Kong, with humanity caught in the balance. Oh my God! If only it were that. Res- if if only it were that simple. <laughs> like seriously. So yeah. Okay. Old legs. What were your thoughts going into this film? coming off of Godzilla King of the Monsters and Kong Skull Island. What were your thoughts of those films coming into this one? Um, so I caught Skull Island pretty late. I think I only watched it maybe a couple months ago when it started streaming a bunch. Uh, King of all monsters. I'm on the record on the pod. I did not like that movie. I thought it was really bad. Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense, and I thought it sort of ruined one of the the better Godzilla villains with King Ghidorah. But um, for some reason, I don't know. I was kind of excited about this movie. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, the the social media behind it, the uh, the just the the chatter the the angry internet people who are just up in arms about how kong even stands a chance and they're probably not wrong but i went through this whole cycle of feelings where i suddenly came out the end and i was really excited to see the movie and i was just like i found myself 
as this weird like contrarian Kong guy who was like, nah, Kong's gonna beat him. Like, <laughs> I don't know how, but he's gonna do it. Like, <laughs> so I was excited. I don't know why. I don't know why, but this is a blockbuster film. It's sort of yeah. the summer and uh, I think it's successful, right? Yeah, it's finally, <laughs> this was the, the most successful box office film since the pandemic hit yeah internationally already so That's yeah it's good. been yeah. it's been doing well we needed the yeah we definitely needed it but tyler same question mm-hmm. to you what were your thoughts coming into this one coming off the previous two uh i rewatched uh both of those uh that uh, uh old legs had uh, caught here and uh, uh i actually enjoyed uh, kong skull island a lot more than what i remembered uh going back to that one was actually pretty fun just uh um, going you know on the old time setting um and uh, uh uh kind of the a lot of what i like about some of the godzilla films uh, uh at least uh around that time where you know a lot of the camera angles from the bottom um where you kind of look up at the monsters uh mm-hmm. I, I do like a lot of those scenes i liked uh uh king of the monsters as well I, that might i guess be com- controversial here going forward for the rest of the rest of the pod but uh i don't know i'm just a fan of uh, you know i guess the monster movies uh, i i felt like that one too uh had a decent amount of you know like showing off uh you know monsters for the first time uh in the film and making you kind of uh, uh see the destruction that they can do um and i and i like that and uh and then so going into this movie you know i was just ready and it just looked like it was going to be more of just a a big old goof kind of a movie um uh, where you know you just bring in these giant beasts and or i should say titans and uh, just let them duke it out and it definitely delivered so i was a happy camper in this movie as well yeah i mean going back to we did an episode on King of, of all monsters mm-hmm. or whatever. Check and yeah, check it out. It's a great one. One. Of my, one of my better performances, not the best from Luke, but you know, I could have done better. It's true. Um, but <laughs> it, uh, I was not excited to talk about it and it's just sort of, it was sort of a letdown for me too. But the thing that I remember coming away from that one, especially was just sort of like, the human people human storylines were super annoying and dumb Mm -hmm. and didn't make i will agree with that yeah but the i thought the monster stuff was good like king Mm -hmm. Ghidorah is is my favorite of godzilla's um rogues gallery and so just seeing him with brand new effects and in in a new thing um was fun um but and i guess like kong skull island was Okay, Tyler, I think you and I saw that in theaters together, actually, yeah, when it yeah, we first did. came out. Mm-hmm. I guess what Kong Skull Island kind of, like, takes chances, which I've come to appreciate. I don't think they work for me, <laughs> but I appreciate that it was, like, trying to do different kind of stuff. Um, but it feels very uneven and kind of all over the place. But at least it wasn't, like the same old Kong movie we've come accustomed to like King Kong gets captured, brought back to New York, and then he climbs up the empire state building, you know, like at least it right. Catches a dame brings her with his swatting airplanes, like flies, you know, at least it wasn't that. And it was, it was trying to do different stuff. And I've almost completely forgotten about most of those two movies. Um, Mm -hmm. And coming into this one, I was like, yeah, I was like, all right, this looks big, big blockbuster, dumb fun, which I think that we all kind of wanted and needed. It's been, it feels like it's been a while since we've had like a big collective, you know, fun movie um, to, to all see. But I guess like it hasn't like since the first Godzilla in 2014, the first run of these, like, I can't speak for old legs, but I'm pretty sure that we liked that quite a bit. And big fan. Bi- okay, good. So we both really <laughs> like it. The and that one got a lot of heat from the internet for not showing Godzilla that much. 
and and not having a whole lot of monster stuff and tyler talking about showing the scale of these monsters i think that one did it the best where you really Mm -hmm. felt super small next to this and you really felt like how big the destruction you know path was and i just don't and we haven't really come close to that since and so it Mm -hmm. just kind of feels like since that movie because the internet backlash was so bad since then they're just like okay no more storylines we're just gonna we're just gonna do bare minimum and we're just gonna do a bunch of dumb bullshit with a bunch of big monsters because that's what people want and Mm -hmm. i mean i guess yeah uh, i don't know from that from that first movie um a, a couple of my gripes uh because I like it, um, but I do think that uh, we've improved, and maybe it's because that's just because I want more of those monsters as well. But uh, whenever you would see Godzilla in that first movie, it was always like pitch black and stuff too. And we finally got some daylight scenes in in these new uh, in the new film here. But uh, but yeah, what we don't get, uh, I just remember when in the first Godzilla, uh, they were at I believe the airport. And uh, you just see a Mutos coming in from the distance. And then all of a sudden, you just see one foot from Godzilla, you know, on the ground level. And you're like, holy shit, Godzilla is huge, you know. So, yeah, we do miss those uh, uh, kind of scenes uh, from, you know, scale wise, where in the first film, you were like, dang, I understand. And that boy is big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. So the whole scope of the fran it's weird to think about this as a franchise because the films are not like interconnected in the way that like the Marvel universe is, you know, we don't get like lines of dialogue where, where Godzilla is yucking it up with Mothra, you know? And so you have this kind of rotating cast of human characters, which are largely replaceable, except for Millie Bobby Brown and Kyle Chandler. Um, We'll get to that. Uh, And so I do think they have done a good job of sort of putting all three of these movies together. Again, they're different directors, different uh, things, different people. But it does feel like sort of its own contained world, which I do give them credit for. And I also don't really care about in any franchise. (laughs) Um, But getting to this one, Godzilla versus Kong, uh, I think we, so we could just start off like who you guys got, right? Who did you have coming in? What did you think? uh what did you think of the the fights so i had um i i took the chalk pick here and i was like i was godzilla because it was like the scale that we keep coming back to was interesting going into it too because traditionally king kong is a lot smaller than godzilla especially with how big they made godzilla in these newer movies so that was kind of a point of contention of like, okay, well, they're just gonna have to make like Kong bigger, I guess, to just make this work. Um, but still, it's like, you, it's hard to beat a walking atom bomb that is Godzilla that can just shoot nuclear beams out. Like, and plus like, Godzilla doesn't really play by the rules either, you know? He just kind of does his thing and is is a literal force of nature. So, so I definitely I had caught or I had Godzilla by a long shot and I didn't really think it was going to be close, but uh hmm. Tyler, I had no logic put into it and I just went full fanboy and I picked Godzilla because oh. I didn't care <laughs> about <laughs> size scale or nothing. I just wanted to see my boy Godzilla destroy and uh, and so he was my pick from the beginning do you guys know who won in the first uh king kong versus godzilla from the 50s uh i'm assuming it's a draw since the you know they both lived right no (laughs) it's not i looked it up (laughs) i haven't seen it but they fight twice and on the second fight kong tackles him off of a cliff and then coming up from the water only kong comes up from the water 
and then it ends. So Godzilla probably comes up later um, since they obviously made more movies after that. <laughs> but in right. canon, Kong, Kong won the first bout, technically. Wow. Wow. Um, okay, so uh, obviously, so if so if this were like an actual thing, like Godzilla versus, you know, this is like a, an actual Vegas would have Godzilla, I think, easily as like a double digit favorite, like probably like minus 1500 on the money line for all the reasons that you guys stated. Uh, I mean, but the thing that I is so, so Godzilla, huge favorite, like there's no reason he should lose, you know? Yeah. The thing I appreciate about this movie is that the movie recognizes the imbalance between these two characters. Yeah. And it's very clear. The movie would not work if it was like, no, no, Kong's, Kong's really good too, right? Kong's super strong, you know? Like that would make the movie more annoying, but it is really like Kong is, he's an underdog. Like the first fight, yeah. uh, which is a uh, borrowing a bit from one of my series, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, <laughs> we won't get into it here, but uh, um, very similar sequences on the ships. Uh, obviously he's gonna lose that one, right? He's going to lose to Godzilla in the water. It's not even going to be close. Uh, that one's definitely Godzilla 1, Kong 0, even though he kind of let him go. Uh, the second fight is where he really gets his ass kicked. And he does die, right? Am I not wrong? Like, Kong dies? Very close. Kind of. <laughs> Until the humans intervene. For a second, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I should have said that in the original King Kong versus Godzilla. Kong almost dies and then gets struck by lightning, which resuscitates him. And then he defeats Godzilla. <laughs> I mean, and once again, this is one of my big, pet, biggest pet peeves in movies. The incorrect use of a defibrillator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> defibrillators are used for irregular heartbeats, not no heartbeats. It just always happens. You it's can't like, just create a heartbeat, heartbeat out of nowhere. It, it resets the heartbeat, and and once and again, I'm not like we haven't even got into the Hollow Earth stuff, so I'm not going to question <laughs> them using a spaceship yeah. as a defibrillator to reset or or give Kong a heartbeat again, so he can kick mecha godzilla's ass but uh um i think it's pretty clear that that godzilla goes 3-0 in this anyone who's like scoring even one fight to kong is kind of out of their mind i don't know what do you guys think yeah i think that godzilla pretty pretty easily took care of business and then kong did the right thing and switched sides came over to his side to beat up on mecha and that's how he got mm -hmm. his win right. in the end you know yeah yeah the first so, fight uh the movie i swear almost ended immediately because <laughs> if the military didn't intervene right away or well you know whatever group um uh, that first uh uh beam from godzilla it would have just been over right on the ship it was boom and then he got shot in the back and so it interrupted it but then it was just yeah. we would have if he would have shot that credits would have rolled right there to just movie yeah. over so yeah 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 it's uh um but it but it's good because it does it does do some things to give Kong a little bit more of a chance. Uh, I do love Kong just as like a he's just maybe a little bit more fun of a character. Like he can actually kind of deal with him. I mean, we haven't really gotten into like the cast yet, but like Rebecca Hall playing like the Kong Whisper, which I just like. I had to like pause the movie when they. <laughs> When they said Kong Whisperer, like it just like oh my gosh, it's I think it's one of my favorite part about these series is that them getting like real ass actors to just do this like the dumbest shit, the dumbest shit. like her lines are incredible in this movie like like even past like the trailer stuff which is great the Kong bows to nobody which I mean 
Um, should we get into like some of the the actual plot stuff here? Because I think it's it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. So. Do you want to give us a rundown? Um. So. Wow. <laughs> so as as we see in the trailer uh godzilla is out there hurting people and we don't <laughs> and we know, don't know why. why uh and shout out to my guy kyle chandler who there's always at least one person in this who has a big presence in the trailer but then is just shut out in the film right and that was kyler yeah. Kyle Chandler this time around he's got like the 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 Godzilla's out there again great actor great actor great actor coach Taylor incredible yeah. um but he's in like three scenes so my guy keep getting them checks love it uh also like maybe not a great dad like like your daughter ended up in Japan just <laughs> overnight yeah um, you know we'll get to that uh god I I now I'm trying to like wrap. Okay, so, so you're trying Godzilla's to... reemerged. He's normally not like super aggro. Um, you just kind of let him be, you know. Yeah. The world kind of decided like we'll just not fuck with him anymore, and you know we can kind of do our thing. Uh, but Kong is sort of in this containment thing with the the uh, the whisper herself, Rebecca Hall, and. Um, Millie Bobby Brown is listening to a conspiracy podcast the Titan Truth her, podcast right which again like one of here's what happens when you start adding in humans to these stories like what's the takeaway conspiracies are real right um, and so this leads them to to make the decision to bring kong to the center of the universe to get godzilla to, or the to the center of the earth to get godzilla to go away maybe but that's actually just a plot from the government to power mecha godzilla i don't yeah is that yep that's Kong? exactly right <laughs> okay uh and Millie Bobby Brown is is there too because she tells yep. lots of tickets. So yep. How did I do, guys? <laughs> I felt like I was watching it for a second time there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the plot doesn't matter in this. Like, we just we know they're gonna fight, and we know it's gonna be stupid, and they have to find some convoluted way to just get us on board, and. But does it, I mean, can we just like really, really, really not make it matter? Like if, if we took out all the hollow earth stuff and just like turn and instead of any of that, it's just like Mad Max Fury Road. It's just 90 minutes of Godzilla versus Kong. And then maybe there's Mecha Godzilla. Like, wouldn't that be better? Well, that's right? what I was going to bring up was I was going to ask you guys takes on like, the Planet of the Apes franchise, the newest one, where we saw it go from Rise of Planet of the Apes to Dawn to War, with each of those having less and less human involvement in each one, you know, where... Yeah. I mean, plus it helps that Weta is the best visual effects company in the game with those effects are amazing. But just, like, Rise was like, okay, we get it, James Franco, scientist stuff, and everybody's like, oh, that ending was so cool. And then Dawn is like sort of half and half, but like the human stuff is like whatever we can do without, but the, but the intimacy of the apes and that environment is like, that's riveting. And then we get to war where it's almost all just with the apes and it's, and it's great. And they got better because of it. And I was thinking that, that this whole time too, of like, can we just, is there a way we could just cut out the humans in this almost all together and just watch that. And I feel like we're smart enough where, I mean, did, yeah, like we're saying, does anybody need a convoluted plot to just be explained to them out loud? And we need to watch these humans go down. Plus, I have some beef with this movie, Titan Truth Podcast, calling his fans loyal listeners. Did you catch that? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I I already talked to our lawyers. Um, they're on it. I I'm just. We can't discuss an open say, case right now. Yeah. I'm gonna say, uh, Brian Ty Tyree Henry, you'll be hearing from us. Yep. Just check your mail. You'll be hearing from us. Yep. Uh, we will not. Uh, we will not be silent on this, right? You will. You will not shun us. Uh, we will. We are you. lovely and loquacious. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so, I agree. I agree a thousand percent. I don't understand the the whole hollow earth thing. It's so wild and out there. Like it just. And the way like my dumb brain works, like I just at, start asking like a thousand. I'm like, I'm like, wait, where's the sun? You know? Yeah, where's Why all this light, light coming here? from? <laughs> <laughs> I remember I made a note. I'm like, wait. <laughs> the You're light? like, wait, there's two <laughs> grounds and they're both <laughs> lit up. And I'm just like, well, it's not like really hollow, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah define hollow for a second yeah it seems like you know it's kind of just like a space right yeah. it's like a vacuum <laughs> like what about you know the other is visual format here um uh so I don't, I don't know i was along for the ride you know um <laughs> well you know they fell into the pit i don't even know if you can call that necessarily earth because you know there was a little bit of like portal travel there and everything yeah. um, in the end and so you know it's almost like they were just uh i, I kind of like the hollow earth you know aspect you know i just uh you know maybe my brain was just switched off and it's just like all right all right here we go this is the center of the earth apparently you know i'm i'm into this and and uh apparently kong got shot up from you know that spot some point you know all right i'm in right you know? <laughs> right to the exact spot that godzilla was it just <laughs> yeah, happened yeah. To, to work out but i'll agree with you though i did i i like the hollow earth part i didn't like it as a concept but just that scene in general of yeah. them getting there and him jumping and then going from different things it was like okay like i was like oh this is nice and it's sort of like a little bit of a character build up for kong too and it's not just them saying there was parts of that where it cuts to the humans being like, okay, this is exactly what you need to know. It was just kind of like Kong figuring it out on his own. You see him mm -hmm. like learning that, you know, his ancestors were from here and sort of feeling his place or whatever. And um, so I, I, I liked that too, but I just hated the lead up to it of like, okay, hollow earth. Okay. We got to make him go down there. Okay. Now we're down here. <laughs> I had a pretty good chuckle at that part too, in the movie where <laughs> the whisperer was just like hey there could be more people there and then all of a sudden kong's just like oh <laughs> and just was gone They're like oh go 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 <laughs> just like oh okay i'm out of here <laughs> i'm diving into that pit no matter what happens <laughs> yeah yeah i uh um i like it i like it it's uh it's like, yeah, it's been me and Dr. Steve Brule for the last hundred years. Like, let's go see if, you know, somebody else I know is in yeah. it, right? <laughs> um, so I, I will say the Hollow Earth stuff I thought was dumb. And I did have my brain off. My brain was all the way off. Um, I still thought it was, I don't know, maybe we could do a little better there. Uh but I will say that at least that aspect of the movie involved like, okay, we're following King Kong, right? So right. that's something. The real like nothing plot line that I think we could completely get rid of is like, once again, like, I don't know, like, what do you guys think? Like, I'll just pose the question. Why was Millie Bobby Brown in this movie? I have no idea. Like other than she's I, I will say like she's hugely influential and important for the culture and and she does just her being in the movie will sell a lot of tickets but stranger things yeah i don't i don't get it i really don't get it. like <laughs> nothing that she really does 
like running around and 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 trying to get to the truth like really affects the outcome right not at all and she had a big part in um king of all monsters or king of the monsters or whatever and there it was just the token like child trying to thinking the monsters misunderstood role which was is overdone but at least it it made more sense in the previous one in this one it was definitely like she was Kyle Chandler's like Godzilla's hurting people we don't know why and she's like no he wouldn't do that listen to this uh this Breitbart podcast that I'm listening to about about these monsters and he's like I don't have time to listen to you right now and then she just gets in a van with some stranger and then also the movie another thing i was just curious about because it's this whole like conspiracy thing i was trying to think about like what's the conspiracy right everybody knows godzilla exists yeah (laughs) that's what i'm thinking i'm like wait are there people out there who don't like (laughs) like i get i get it okay I get there's like some crazy thing that people don't believe these days or people choose to believe. But I'm like, if y'all don't think fucking Godzilla <laughs> and fucking a bunch of these other monsters aren't real <laughs> after the last five years, like, I don't know what to say. Like, it, like, it should be common knowledge by now, <laughs> right? Like, holy shit. Like, maybe we are really in trouble if like, if David Tyree Henry is like, is like, dog, like, we got to tell more people about Godzilla, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, those parts were definitely kind of the lows of the movie, uh, for sure, in my opinion. And it felt like they just shoot her in, you know, since, uh, you know, she had uh, a big role in the previous film. Um, most of that stuff, yeah, especially like you said, um, it didn't really affect anything. And so, it could have all been uh, cut out more than likely. Um, nothing was like necessarily funny. There was one part of that whole part uh, that uh, I did think was pretty funny where once they did arrive in Hong Kong um, uh, and uh, they were snooping around and he just has his little flip phone camera and he's taking pictures and he's just like, oh yeah, these are going to blow up online. And it's like, that was just like a little attention to detail. I thought that was like, yeah, that's totally the conspiracy theorist photos, you know, just an absolute garbage mm. photo that they post online. It's like, oh, check this out, you know, and you can't see it. I did get a good pretty chuckle out of that. But other than that, their whole parts were uh, pretty lame. Um, kind of kind of the, the lowest parts of the film. Yeah. And I do have a confession to make, Tyler. Um and old legs um so there's a running theme on this podcast that uh i do i typically do not watch films that jordan recommends to me that old legs tells me to watch um i can't explain why never watches any of the movies we talk about no i don't and uh single one (laughs) it's a problem and I'm, I'm work, I'm taking this time to, to work on it, but, uh, I had not seen Shin Godzilla, which you had told me to watch many times. Um, and, and then Tyler today (laughs) asked if I had seen it. Um, and so I watched it today when I was supposed to be working and, uh, hot take. I thought it was really good. (laughs) <laughs> but but what I really liked about it was that it was you guys know this, but it the whole movie is basically just like what a bureaucratic nightmare it would be to have yep. to deal with something like this and all the red tape you'd have to deal with and all the PR stuff. And it was so refreshing to see a movie that had that take on it, which like any of those logistics don't even <laughs> come close to being mentioned you know in this movie which is fine i mean it's not like we're that's what we're going in to see but it's just like i don't even know because it's hard to say because i don't think that i think that this is one where it had it was big and dumb which we all thought it was going to be it knew exactly what it was and it had fun doing it 
I think it'd be a lot better if we could just cut out the Millie Bobby Brown stuff. I really didn't. I I, I liked. I actually liked Mecha Godzilla bringing that into it, just because why the fuck not? You know, like that was super fun. But the villain aspect of that conspiracy of bringing it was so annoying. Like I don't know. I just thought maybe we could have done a better job. It'd be more interesting if like Kyle Chandler was the one who was building Mecha Godzilla. Like if he took a turn of like look at all the destruction Godzilla's done. We're letting him, we decided we're not going to fuck with him anymore, but we're going to build this Mecha Godzilla just in case he comes back. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, some, some high, you know, hijinks ensue or whatever. Yeah. I thought the Mecha Godzilla part, um, what are they finally introduced that where um, it was pretty uh uh, dumb <laughs> their motives behind it yeah. so i was glad that they didn't dawn on it you know it was just like here's mecha godzilla and here's my plan and then and then he's like released you know it wasn't on. like it wasn't like drag out you know mecha godzilla or yeah. something like that it was like uh here he is yeah we just needed the the power crystal you know and, and we turned him on and um and so at least they got through introducing mecha godzilla fast instead of uh making that like a midpoint of the movie you know portion and then like yeah you know getting fed all that uh useless information um it it was (laughs) really dumb on how they you know killed him off to you know the head guy or just oh he's got power now he's fully conscious i would just kill him you know but uh but (laughs) <laughs> at least yeah they just kind of wrapped that up real quick and then just got back to the action it feels like they kind of did that with most of the plot points in this movie it was just like mm-hmm. all right no nope, uh, quick you nope, uh he's in a uh, you know that was funny too how they explained kong getting bigger was like oh he's been trapped in this enclosure and, and he just keeps getting bigger he's not gonna fit here much longer all right and on to the next mm-hmm. you know they're just like all right faster come on keep it going yep yep, yep and which you know if, if they uh, included a lot of like people parts i mean they could have maybe made the movie like two hours and 30 minutes and then just kept shoveling us like the garbage um yes. that and and then we would just sit in agony just waiting to see godzilla come back and not while the people are talking it's like all right you know just chop chop real quick yeah now let's get back to it right yeah i uh i want to i want to dovetail back a little bit with you bringing up shin Godzilla. thank you for watching it first You're thank welcome. you um it is very good and i think that the difference between something like that the big big difference between something like that and it's okay to be different um, um because both kind of franchises or whatnot have their merits but uh like godzilla versus kong is is just godzilla versus kong it's not godzilla versus kong versus mankind um and so like it's not even really in the equation what's happening with you know the human race right where like shin godzilla is it's godzilla versus the extinction of man right how would a, a government entity deal with, how, how would they save the human race, right? Like I'm never worried in any of the, in any of the Western films, whether like, wow, are the humans gonna like, are we all gonna die, right? It's right. never really comes up. Um, and, and the other thing with the Shin Godzilla stuff is like that, like no singular person is more important than the other. No human character is more important than another human character where in our, the the Western movies, it's like, it's like, okay, I guess we have to care about Millie Bobby Brown and Vera Farmiga and Kyle Chandler. Right. Even though like they really don't matter. Right. Um, Which it's a difference. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, yeah and then with that shin godzilla um and since it is like godzilla versus mankind they shoot all those scenes on the ground kind of like i referred to at the top and so you like you kind of feel like mankind is screwed when you you just look up and and it gives you a great weight of godzilla that we did miss big time from this movie like godzilla and kong were like flattening that city um but like in Shin Godzilla, you're like, oh shit, there goes another building. How you you think like how many people were in, like how many lives were just lost there? 
yeah. this movie it was like nah but shin godzilla really makes you feel the weight that mankind is getting not. crushed under him i i need to rewatch that film but i remember feeling this like this like bit of remorse for the shin godzilla like he was like it like he's like this amalgamation that he didn't ask for any of this and it's just like this sort of tortured soul thing when he's just like shooting beams all over the place and and oh my god the music in those are shout out by uh one of my all-time favorites directed that movie uh hideki ono the the creator of neon genesis evangelion so we'll get we'll get to thrace upon a time uh (laughs) soon soon it may be years before we see it here stateside but uh yeah loyal listeners go check that out uh if you if you're if you had fun with godzilla vs Kong. so did we deserve better from godzilla vs king kong i think it was fine mm-hmm. i i really enjoyed myself i had a good time uh it bordered on a little bit too much uh talky talky from the humans but you know that's fine uh i I was good with it i i I thought as a blockbuster it served its purpose and i was surprised by that what do you guys think did you do you think you'll remember it uh yes yeah okay sort of (laughs) (laughs) yeah i felt this one remember isaac gonzalez's death because that pissed me off that was my least favorite part about the movie Isaac Gonzalez. We'll talk about here when we do our bloodshot episode. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, yeah, I felt this one was, uh, uh, you know, it delivered at least for me uh, too. That uh, you know, I kind of went in expecting, you know, just uh, you know what I got. Um, it definitely delivered on that aspect. Uh, you know, just monsters fighting uh, and not much else um, in between, I guess. And so I was pretty satisfied. Uh, like it, they, they, you know, had uh, uh, plenty of, uh, you know, the the scenes in like daytime that you could actually see. So that was great. I feel like, you know, they keep moving it in a different direction, you know, uh, uh, kind of like you were saying. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe a little bit more monster focus. This one definitely took uh, some different leaps, I'd say, where, uh, you know, then it was like all about neon in this movie too. They really went with visuals, which mm-hmm. I don't think that they can, you know, keep reusing going forward. It's, it's kind of like, it feels like it's going to be like a one-off film. And then the next one will still be, you know, probably take a different take if they're going to, you know, keep pushing forward. So, you know, maybe just another stepping point and who knows you know what we could get uh going forward for future films yeah i think it's because that's the thing about king of the monsters and kong skull island is they're super forgettable for me um and i feel like this one is probably just like bare bones exactly what we expected and it was fun and i and like you guys said i I agree that it was just fun and dumb and that's what we were kind of hoping for um and would i like to see a movie more like the the 2014 godzilla or shin godzilla yes but i'm also not the primary demographic and that didn't make as much money and honestly it's not as much fun to rewatch. i'm sure like to have to sit through and slog through that first Godzilla where this one, yeah, you can just throw it on and monsters are going to be fighting before you know it. Um, But yeah, I just, I really just hope that someday we can get like almost no humans in one of these and just, just spend. (laughs) And then it's basically an animated movie at that point. (laughs) It's all just CGI (laughs) and they're just fighting. And uh, yeah, Mad Max Fury Road meets Plan of the Apes. I'm all for that. Yeah. Uh, one of my last questions, I think, um, this film really sort of exhausts at least some of the more well-known characters within the monster universe. Is there any, uh, any villain? I don't, I, I don't know if villain is the right word, but any monsters you would like to see up next? 
I'm curious. Because mm. we've sort of like we're we're at the point now. I mean, even a lot of like the even fringe characters like like Rodin and stuff were just torched and you know they're gone, right? Yeah. King Ghidorah, we we use Mecha Godzilla for I mean, obviously that's an easier one to bring back, but you know, that was 15 minutes of screen time and that one's gone. I mean, where, where Yeah, I was pretty sad that they got kind of uh, uh threw Mecha Godzilla out just to like get destroyed. I would love if they just maybe even just set it up for like, okay, now we're going to deal with Mecha Godzilla next because and you know, like you said, they could always still bring Mecha Godzilla just back into it, yeah. but it's like Oh, you know, I, I actually was watching and thought like I wouldn't mind if it just like ended somewhere here and let's pick up Mecha Godzilla later, you know, in, in like the next film because uh, um, it, I don't want them to just like toss that one aside too. Yeah, they they kind of burn through the bill villains pretty quick. Um, hopefully that uh, I mean like Mothra and everything. It's just like okay, gone, gone, gone. Yeah, and now it's like. I like the turn they took with Mothra to sort of make her an ally it was mm. kind of interesting, but yeah, it does like, but I, I like the Mutos quite a bit and that was a new one. So mm -hmm. I guess if they did some, but King Ghidorah has always been my favorite and that one's yeah. already done. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe what, what if we could do like a Mecha King Ghidorah? you know instead of mecha yeah. godzilla they remake king Ghidorah, but mecha we got the skulls maybe they can figure something out so i i can't fully uh claim this take this was uh this was workshop primarily by our another good friend of the show uncle chuck but okay um, our thinking is that and he brought this up that maybe millie bobby brown is is stuck around in this series because eventually and this goes back, and everything, almost everything I say goes back to Evangelion nowadays, but uh, they're going to need preview that prebubescent teens to pilot these mechs. And that, my friends, would Pacific be rim. a great fucking use for Millie Bobby Brown. If she's piloting Mechagodzilla for any reason whatsoever, like, say they're like, like Mecha Godzilla is like fused with Vera Farmiga's dead soul, and she's the only one that can sync with the computer. Like, that would be awesome, and that's what I want to see from this. So, yes, yes, either King Ghidorah, absolutely, Mecha Godzilla, absolutely, but only piloted if we get teenagers piloting the 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 mechs, and and they also they they can't be okay with it either. Do you think that uh, will <laughs> would you be on board for a Pacific Rim Godzilla crossover if they try to do a third Pacific Rim where the once again it it de well it depends again um, Pacific Rim and it's adults doing the piloting I don't like that you like it's got to be teenagers they have to be forced to do it yeah they have to be forced to do it by their parents or by a government. Um, and most of the time, it doesn't work out well for him. That's yeah. Well, speaking of being forced to do something you don't want to do, thank you for uh, making me do this episode <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and watch this film. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much for joining us here once again. Always a pleasure. Uh, where can the loyal listeners find you? Yeah, just search me up on Twitter, um, YouTube, Burdette Dog. You know, I just... Uh, I definitely don't do movies, so maybe maybe uh, <laughs> I'm hitting the wrong market, but, you know, I got some video game stuff up on my channel, so go follow me there if you want to take a peek. Yeah. I'd love to have you. Yeah, anytime. And let us know, loyal listeners, your thoughts on all things Godzilla vs. King Kong. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at LukeLarson89. Find this podcast at L Squared Podcast on Twitter, on YouTube. Um, on Instagram, we're on Facebook at L2 Podcast, and we are on every platform that you can get podcasts, hot and fresh. Give us a follow, give us a like, comment, help us out, shout us out, let us know, and uh, until next time. <laughs>